Please. All right, Allison's everybody. Comment. Thank you for coming to our talk. Uh, under the trench coat, neutron agent extensions. Um, my name is Nate Johnston. I work for Comcast. This is my colleague Margaret Francis, who also works for Comcast, and David Shaughnessy, who works for Intel. Um, a little bit about who we are. Um, you can read this later when you download the slides, uh, but we uh, were both, or all three of us are neutron contributors. Margaret and I have contributed uh, to uh, neutron fire firewall as a service as well. So I'd like to start by talking about the history of neutron agent extensions. Um, neutron agent extensions have their origins in the quality of service uh, effort um, in the Keel and Liberty cycles. It, it took a, a lot of engineering to do, uh, took a while. They are implemented in a, a separate feature branch, uh, the Q QoS or quality of service feature branch in neutron by these folks who I want to give credit to. Uh, Moshe Levy, Irina Berezovsky, Miguel Angel Aho Palayo, and Ihara Hrashishka. Um, the problems that aging extensions were intended to solve um, were uh, whenever a new feature needed to be implemented in Neutron that required uh, some agent side implementation code, um, that code was getting just you know, uh, put into the neutron agent in general, uh, which led to some bloat in the agent, uh, and that was not a sustainable path over the long term. Uh, also, advanced services, or external projects like advanced services, uh, were unable to extend agent functionality without overriding the agent. And by that I mean taking the agent, the main agent class, subclassing it, and uh, uh, with you know, a, a subclass that implemented some additional service-specific logic and then have that be the main execution point for the agent. Um, I, I, we saw this especially in the L3 agent, but there was some instance of it in the L2 agent as well. Um, and then even with that inheritance-based extending of the agent, uh, when you had more than one external service, uh, it became extremely difficult to have those uh, work at the same time. For example, I think at some point somebody got firewall as a service and VPN as a service working simultaneously with the L3 agent, but it required cartwheels in the code, and that's not the way you want to, want to build a general framework. So neutron agent extensions arose to meet those challenges. Um, the extension manager uh, is a new class that was implemented, a uh, subclass from Stevedore's named extension manager, uh, in a pattern that was proven to work well with uh, the Neutron plugins and the ML2 uh, mechanism drivers. Uh, it, it kept with that same pattern. Um, and the agent sends messages to the extension manager, which then forwards them to all extensions. Um, as I said, the first implementation of this was in quality of service, um, which is an L2 concept that extends the idea of the network port by adding regulation of data flows. So the way this was implemented, uh, a new QoS policy object uh, to specify the configuration of the quality of service uh, was added to the port as an attribute of the port. Uh, so any updates uh, to the port data that would go over RPC would uh, include the relevant QoS policy information. Um, so if I update the port, then the QoS policy gets uh, sent to the agent. If I, but what if I just update the QoS policy? Um, uh, because we took something new, the QoS policy, and added it to something existing, the port, we needed a method to synthesize a uh, port update just in the case that the QoS policy was updated. Um, and so a QoS notification driver, which is part of the, the QoS plugin in Neutron Server, uh, was created. Um, to make sure that uh, those events would be properly synthesized and, uh, and sent down the wire. Um, so that was the, the first version of agent extensions, which worked well for the, the first feature we implemented in QOS, which was uh, bandwidth limiting. Uh, the second feature we implemented with QOS, we discovered we needed a little bit more sophistication in the mechanism. Um, uh, that was the DSCP feature. Um, DSCP manages uh, uh, tagging of traffic using um, OVS flow entries. Um, OVS flow entries are managed in the Neutron OVS L2 agent using cookies to make sure that, say, if the agent restarts, it can identify flows that correspond to the previous 
uh, iteration and clear those out. So the only flows that are there are the ones that uh, it is inserted. Um, so what we did is we added an agent extension API, a programming API, not an inter-process communication API. Um, and uh, basically that's an object that has visibility into this information that's in the agent, um, but that, that object is transmitted to the agent extensions, so they have visibility into this piece of data that only exists in, uh, in the agent process. Oh, wrong way. <laughs> Um, at the beginning of the Newton cycle, um, we, uh, we attacked the problem of the L3 agent, which was suffering some of the same issues that the L2 agent did. Um, uh, and so uh, this, the pattern of agent extensions uh, looked like it would solve the problems that we were having. Uh, so we did, what we did is we took the agent extension code, made it generic, moving it out of the L2, uh, partially out of the L2 tree into a series of abstract classes. Uh, so um, we adjusted the L2 agent extensions to inherit from those, but then we could also set up a parallel L3 agent extension uh, that would serve the, the layer three needs. The difference between them uh, really comes down to uh, the layer two uh, agent uh, is concerned with port events. So that's the information it forwards on. Uh, when it receives a, a port update or whatever, it, it forwards that to its extensions. The uh, layer three agent uh, is concerned with router events. So when a, a router create, delete, update uh, is received uh, over RPC, that's what it forwards to the agent extensions. So the uh, second implementation uh, that we work with with agent extensions is firewalls as a service. Uh, firewall as a service had a complicated inheritance-based relationship uh, where it was uh, overriding the, or hijacking the um, neutron agent uh, at the start of Newton, but that was just too complicated and that relationship was severed, so we, uh, we turned the, um, the firewall as a service agent into a, a layer three extension using this framework. Um, it, uh, drove the creation of a, an agent API similar to the L2 one, except instead of uh, OVS cookie, uh, what it's allowing agent extensions to have visibility into is the router info. Um, uh, in the case of firewalls as a service, it needs router info to associate uh, routers to uh, namespaces uh, so that it can take action in the correct namespace. So that's where, far, that's where uh, agent extensions came from. Uh, to go into a deep dive, I'm going to pass it to my colleague, Margaret. Oh, crap. Look what I did. It's off. Hello. <sighs> Great. I did that. I don't know. Here comes this guy. Okay, I have things that I can say without the screen. Um, <clears throat> So as I was um, thinking about what I wanted to say in these slides, I was imagining myself in the audience and imagining myself um, what I would want to get out of this talk. And what I would want to get out of this talk, thank you, is information that would enable me to write um, an agent extension. And so it was with that in mind that I wrote what I wrote. Um, and uh, what I'm covering specifically is the architectural de details that I think somebody would need to know in order to write their own agent extension. Um, in a later section of the talk, uh, we'll get into more of the weeds and talk about uh, details. Okay. Maybe I'll give this whole thing without slides. Which brings me uh, to my next point, which is that this is the first presentation that I've done, and I'm nervous. Uh, a colleague of mine told me that uh, I should just come out and say this. So, um, but you needn't worry as long as these come back, because my <laughs> colleague, Nate, is um, prepared, if I faint, to step over me and continue with section two. I'll fix it. Don't worry. Okay. It'll work. Okay. I have one more thing I can say before I need the slides, which is that, um, again, thinking about myself in the audience, thank you. What, what is it that I did that? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Another thing that I was thinking about, imagining myself in the audience if I hadn't yet contributed to Neutron, is what is it? What would it be like, like psychologically? Um, <clears throat> so my my own story is that I'm relatively new to Neutron and to OpenStack, and actually I'm relatively new to networking too, at least at the L2, L3 layer. layer. But um, the core and other frequent reviewers uh, in Neutron, in addition to being super smart, and like one of the cores just left, and he couldn't hear me say this, but um, in addition to being super smart, they're also unbelievably helpful to new people, and um, most importantly to me, they're really nice. And so for those reasons, I was able to come up to speed, I think, pretty quickly, and in fact, you know, work on some of the things that you saw in that earlier slide, for instance, the generalization of the L2, L3 agent extension code. So, you know, if you're out there and you're worried that this would be too daunting for you, I encourage you to just jump in and it'll be fine. Okay, now, if I don't mess this up, I can talk about actual content. Um, <clears throat> So as Nate mentioned, uh, earlier agent extension implementations highlighted um, some issues that we need to be concerned about. Um, and they are that, you know, in addition to, having, to wanting to run uh, multiple extensions simultaneously, we also want to be able to implement an extension and change it, extend it, refactor it without touching the agent. We want to be able to load an agent extension without affecting the agent. And most important, I think most important, we want to be able to give the extension access to agent resources. And these concerns are seemingly uh, in tension with one another. Uh, it seems like the natural way to address uh, the last issue anyway is, to, is by some sort of subclassing in one direction or the other. But if you subclass it in such, that, in such a way that the agent is a subclass of the extension, then you have thereby touched the agent. Um, and if you go the other direction and the extension subclasses the agent, um, well, then it becomes really difficult, as Nate mentioned, not impossible, but very, very difficult to run more than one extension at a time. So, <clears throat> We have these two tools in our toolkit that were recently pulled out in order to address all of these concerns. And they are um, the Stevedore Packages Named Extension Manager and the um, uh, Neutron's Agent uh, API implementation. So we'll start with the Stevedore Package. So there are three uh, components of the framework, three um, uh, classes, really, that have specific responsibilities in order to uh, enable agent extensions, at least the new uh, form of them. So the agent needs to uh, instantiate the manager, create one, um, and it needs to send the manager messages that are ultimately uh, intended for the extensions to the, to the manager. The extension manager uh, is going to load the extensions, of course, and it's going to broadcast uh, agent requests to the extension. There's an abstract base class that's used to provide the interface for the extensions. If you're writing an extension, what it needs to do is it needs to implement that interface. And then you, the person, needs to create an entry point and register it with the caller. I'll show you an example of that. Um, and define a unique na namespace for the collection of in extensions, where your extension will live. Um, I think that's all I want to say. And we're going to see an example of, of what I just talked about momentarily. So. The uh, named extension man manager um, handles several but not all of the concerns that I talked about earlier in this section. It you know, enables you to load uh, extensions, multiple extensions at runtime, and, it, and, um, and it enables you to implement an extension without touching the agent. 
So we have this last concern remaining, which is that we want to make sure that the extension gets access to agent resources. And to do that, um, we've implemented this notion of the, of the agent API. So I'm resurrecting this diagram from Nate's portion of the talk um, because I think it really captures quite well what's happening with uh, the, uh, the agent API. In this case, it, we're looking at an L3 scenario. We have this router info that, that is the piece of agent information that we want to make accessible to the extensions. Um, what we do with the agent API is that we have um, a, a, a single copy of this router info, which is what you would want, that's made accessible and made, it's made visible to the agent extensions. You see this, these windows that intercede between the extensions and the um, router info and that sort of indicates, it should indicate that it's a read-only access. We really don't want the extensions to modify this agent information in any way. Okay, so now we're looking at this framework again, except augmented. Um, and the additional pieces are the additional pieces required to uh, bring about this a agent API feature. The first addition is the agent API itself. That uh, class is going to be instantiated by the agent, um, and the agent is going to provide to that instance the agent data that it wants the extensions to have, ultimately. The agent API also uh, defines several methods that the extensions will call in order to access the agent information. Now, in addition to having to instantiate the manager, the agent needs to instantiate the uh, agent API, and of course, giving it the data that it needs to give it. And it sends this loaded up API to the, man to the manager. Um, an additional task, a responsibility of the um, manager is to forward that received a agent API along to the extensions so they can use it. And then the abstract uh, base class has two additional functional, uh, responsibilities, which are to define a consume API uh, method and an initialized method, and I'll get to those in just a minute. Okay, so the, the, the um, interface for the extension has changed with the introduction of the agent API concept, and, and it now needs to um, implement these further two uh, methods. The consume API method does what you would think it does. It enables the, interface, the extension to um, receive and keep the agent API. It's not keeping the agent information, it's keeping a mechanism by which it can access the agent information. And then it needs to implement, implement this initialize method, which will allow it, well, to do anything it wants, actually, but often what it's doing is it's doing something with um, the agent API. Okay, so now I'm gonna show you some code. Um, specific, um, specifically first um, on the L3 side. And um, I'm going to be um, looking at Firewell as a service. It's, it's a service that I recently did some work in. And um, in particular, it's on the L3 side, there's both L2 and L3 sides of Firewell as a service. Um, and I'm gonna be um, showing you some code from the V2 version of it, which um, specifically uh, applies firewalls to router ports. So I wanted to show you in the Neutron code base the uh, aspects of, the, um, of this new architecture, at where they lie, where, the, the, where these different components live in the um, tree. And I've also shown you here where in the Neutron FWAS code base, um, the extension in question that I'm gonna show you lives. This is the uh, L3 agent extension API. 
And, um, <clears throat> and this is real code. Uh, all of these are real code, <laughs> um, except that anything that is extraneous, anything that doesn't have to do with this talk has been removed. So, you know, nothing runs really, and it's not necessarily PEP8 compliant. <laughs> so don't look to be um, testing this out directly. Um, <clears throat> but you can see that um, in, in its init, uh, the API uh, takes a hold of the agent API and assigns it to self, but as a private variable. And then these other methods expose certain parts of the router info um, to, did I say agent API first? Okay. It, it assigns the incoming router info as a, a private variable to itself. Then these other methods um, are going to be called by the extensions, and they enable the extensions to access the appropriate parts of the router info. The agent. So, you know, the, the agent needs to now do several things, right? It needs to instantiate the manager. It needs to instantiate the agent API. It needs to send that, ag that agent API to the manager. And here is uh, a, a representative uh, method on the agent where a router gets added, the ag agent gets notified, ignoring that this is a, a private method. Um, and in turn, the, uh, <clears throat> the agent is going to notify the manager that the router has been added, and then the manager, as you might expect, is going to notify the extensions. So the ex extensions manager, um, as Nate mentioned, uh, it has both a general and a sp specific L3 or L2 specific um, side. So the, the general side is, um, is to define, um, excuse me, is to uh, load the extensions. It's going to load the extensions using uh, a, a list of extensions taken from a config file. This is the, you know, runtime loading of, of extensions. And it's going to, you know, tell its superclass, here's the namespace for these extensions. The initialize method is going to um, tell each of its extensions, I want you to consume this API, this agent API, and now do, you know, do some initialization with it, whatever that might be. You'll notice that consume API comes before initialize, and that's important that that happen because um, on the extension side, the initialize method and other methods as well may and will really assume that the agent API is accessible at that point. So this consume API method really needs to be just about the first thing that happens to the extension. And then a, a subclass of the, this generalized class is the L3 specific uh, uh, part of this, and, and that uh, handles router-specific behavior. And when I said that um, I'm showing you code and I've removed stuff that's extraneous to this talk, I should have also said that I've not included everything that's relevant to this talk. So there's more than just add router, there's, <laughs> just in case you're wondering. Um, <clears throat> and here is the, uh, the agent API. Um, there's, again, both a general and an L3-specific uh, set of classes. Um, the general defines these two methods that I've been talking about, and the specific one defines these router-specific methods. Now, both of these classes are an ABC uh, abstract class, and some but not all of the methods in them are ABC ab abstract methods. Um, what this means is that any subclass that implements one of these classes must implement the abstract methods. And if, it, if there's a subclass that doesn't implement all of the abstract methods designated as, as such with this decorator, then there will be a runtime error, which is nice. You'll see here that consume API, probably the most critical method in this game is not designated an ABC abstract method 
as such. And that's intentional. The reason for that is that by the time this architecture came into place, there were already uh, extensions in play that did not have that method defined, and we didn't want to break them. And it turns out that, well, they don't need it yet, or maybe at all. So, <clears throat> that's, so it's a historical reason. Here's the extension. And you know, it kind of does exactly what you would expect at this point, right? It implements the interface. It takes in the AP, AP, agent API and assigns that to self. It implements these router-specific uh, methods. And then elsewhere in the code, you'll see that it's calling methods um, of the agent API in order to get at, at, to, to receive information about router info, that object. And finally, I promised that I'd show you how to set up an entry point. And here it is. You got to create it in your setup config, and then you got to tell the, the agent that it's there. So part of that was cut off. <laughs> You'll have to figure it out. OK. Um, <clears throat> so you. You can see that with the combination of these two things that we've satisfied all these concerns, right? I'm not going to read them over again, but um, we are good to go. And I'm going to talk now very briefly about the L2 side of things. And the reason I'm going to talk only briefly about it is because David has really great things to say, but also because the patterns that you would see, you do see, on the L2 side match exactly what we've seen on L3, with, with some exceptions that I'm going to call out now. Again, here's um, information about where uh, these different components live in their respect in, well, it's all in neutron in the tree. Um, I want to point out the agent uh, side of things because, you know, on, for, on L3, there's not just a single monolithic, uh, excuse me, L2, there's not a single agent. There's multiple uh, o, uh, OVS, Linux Bridge, and um, SRIOV. And uh, they live pretty bur deeply buried in the Neutron code, that first path name you see. It took me a long time to find that, and now I've saved you some time if you've been looking. Um, <clears throat> and the, uh, the QOS agent, um, sorry, the OVS agents, uh, the, the, sorry, the QOS agent extension is the extension that I'm going to be talking about briefly here um, using an OVS driver and the location of the files that are relevant are in the, the space listed there. Okay, there's one uh, difference uh, between the L2 and the L3 agent APIs um, and that is that on the L3 side we have a single class um, that constitutes the API, and here we have two. And you'll, you have to remember that this is specific to the OVS agent. Um, the, uh, the OVS agent uh, has a, um, a special demand, which is that um, any um, flow entries in flow tables need to be designated as essentially owned by that agent or agent extension. And to do that, Nate described the cookie mechanism that, that, that um, performs that role. And so we need to allow the agent to provide a cookie to the agent extension and actually to the driver itself. Um, and so we have two classes here that perform that work in conjunction. Um, I'm going to skip through this and the next couple of slides um, to get to. Right, yep to get to um, the extension. And I, I just want to briefly point out that you'll see in its initialized method, it's in turn calling a, both a consume API method and an initialized method on the driver. Um, and that's because the driver is the thing that needs to access um, agent information, namely by getting the cookie. The, um, those method names, the common method names between the extension on the one hand and the driver on the other hand, are incidental in the sense that they, they don't need to be the same. They happen to be the same. If you're like me, that would confuse you. Um, but uh, it's incidental. And I guess I'm done and handing it over to David. 
Thank you very much. Okay. I'm... Next slide. There we go. Uh, so just in section three, I'll be running over the use cases for the agent extension, as well as talking about some of the future work that's currently in progress. So uh, there we go. So uh, the use cases for the L2 extensions include quas, tap, and firewalls. So the L2 extension updates every time the port's updated. So that makes it very good for quas where you could put limits on the bandwidth for each port, tap where you can mirror traffic uh, from ports to an external uh, port, just so you can debug traffic coming from those ports. Uh, so I'll just move on quickly to the L3 ones. So the use cases for the L3 extensions include uh, the firewall as a service, uh, load balancing, and VPNs. So the L3 uh, updates on the router update, so it'll send you all the gateway information for the routers. So that makes it very good for firewall as a service if you want to kind of do access control lists on the traffic uh, coming in and out of the gateways. So for example, maybe you want to restrict traffic coming into this particular particular subnet from another subnet. So that'd be a good use case for that. Uh, load balancing, so you can just distribute traffic as it comes into different VMs to stop um, uh, the VMs basically getting overloaded with traffic. Uh, so just for the future work as well. So the work we have planned so far for agent extensions, uh, one is the L2 OVS flow manager. So the L2 OVS flow manager tackles a problem that came up when the Consume API uh, was introduced to the L2 OVS agent. So the, what basically happens is that the Consume API was provided to allow extensions access to the open flow table. Uh, but because this is a shared, because this is a shared resource uh, between all the extensions and the extensions don't know what other extensions are loaded, they shouldn't either. Uh, this basically means that there's contention on how it can be used. So if you have multiple extensions on the same, working on the same flow table, there's no guarantee they'll put their flows on so that they don't interfere with each other's operations. Uh, so the other one then is the Neutron Common Classification Framework. Uh, this is the Neutron Common Classifier. So basically this is about introducing a common framework uh, for Neutron and extensions to define traffic classifications within Neutron. This is to stop uh, every extension defining their own classification framework and effectively having a horrifically inconsistent API across all of Neutron. Uh, so the next thing is the bonus round, so making your own agent extension. So uh, I'm just going to go over some parts of it as quickly as I can uh, to leave time for questions. So these are kind of some of the key parts with the last two being optional parts, but I think it's very important to know if you want to try and develop one yourself. So the first one is the agent descriptor. Uh, so this, um, sorry, uh, this kind of defines the abstract plugin, gives it the names, the aliases, uh, the description, updated. And you see it gets the plugin interface. So what that does is it returns an abstract class for your service plugin. So it defines your REST API effectively. Uh, so the next one is the resource attribute map. So what this does is it lets you define custom types. So for example, with QoS, that would be QoS policies and QoS rules. So uh, it allows you to kind of create your own commands and apply them selectively to ports. Uh, so this is the service plugin. Uh, so this is actually what would extend the REST API. What I have here is actually the uh, service plugin base for the aptly named skeleton pork plugin base. Plugin base. Um, this isn't exactly what you'd use for a plugin base. I've actually included some things you would use in the actual plugin uh, just to show that they're necessary. But as you can see on the left-hand side of the screen as well, uh, there's in very, very tiny font uh, the setup CFG file and the entry point defined right there for how to get the service plugin loaded. Um, so you can see it just says neutron.service underscore plugins equal to, and then skeleton port, the name of the extension, equal to, and then the pathway to where this class is actually defined. So that pathway is to where the actual plugin is defined. This is just the abstract one. Uh, so next, next, L3 agent plugin. So uh, this is the actual plugin then to the agent. Uh, so the last one 
attaches to QService for your REST API. This one's the actual plugin to the L3 agent in this case. So this is the bare minimum. Uh, so on setup.cfg, you define another entry point, which is the neutron.agent.l3.extensions. This was the namespace that was described earlier as well, uh, earlier in the talk by Margaret. Uh, so, and you can see there, uh, this is for the L3 one. So it's called the skeleton router, which is the name of the extension. Uh, and it equals to the pathway to where you would find this extension inside the uh, skeleton extension project that is out of tree to neutron. Uh, so if you just look uh, to the actual code on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see that it just prints log information every time one of the methods is called. So um, you can just see as well there's a consume API, so it'll absorb that. And then you have add router, update router, and delete router. So without a Without a service plugin or an RPC endpoint, this will be called every time a router is being updated. Uh, so you'd have, to, if you wanted to update it, for example, when you get when you have your service plugin, what you'd need to do is create uh, RPC endpoints on either one. So on the service plugin, to let uh, the other agents know, hey, your special variable has been updated, and another endpoint here that'll listen to it uh, to actually trigger all the all the calls once that particular RPC uh, topic has been called. So I'll just move on to the L2, L2 extension. This is very counterintuitive. You pull back to go forward and forward to go back. But yes, so the L2 agent plugin. Uh, so it's loaded by the Neutron's agent, uh, Q agent, so it's the L2 one. Same thing, you define an entry point in the setup.cfg. And um, this one has more information on it. Uh, so with the L2 agent, it doesn't have add update and delete port. Instead, what it has is handle port and delete port. So just what I put in here was a bit of fluff that basically it keeps an internal list of the ports that come in. And if one isn't in the list, it'll call the create driver. And if one is in the list, it'll call the update driver. And then it'll pop it when it's deleted. Um, Yes, so you define the RPC endpoint as well if you were tracking your own uh, custom variables and data types in here as well. So the next thing is the L2 agent drivers. So this isn't as important for the L3 because there's only one backend at the moment, but with the L2 you have the OVS, the Linux bridge, SRIV, just to name a few. And what's important then is that when your extension is called that it has the right backend because using the Linux bridge one when you're using OVS isn't the best, isn't the best. Uh, so as you can see at the top, I've defined entry points uh, for the OVS, Linux bridge, and SRIOV, and these all have pathways to different drivers that are uh, inside the custom out of tree extension. Uh, as you can see on the left, that's the initialize from the previous driver, and the first, the first call after the log is to assign the skeleton port driver. And as you can see, it makes a call to Neutron Manager. It'll, it'll use the driver type to associate that with a driver backend, and then it'll put that there. And on the right, then, I've defined the abstract class for the driver. So um, as you can see, it's all ABC. So if you don't implement one of these, it'll throw an exception at runtime. But as you can see here as well, I haven't put that on the consume API. And the reason for that is there is no agent API for Linux Bridge and uh, SRIOV. So yes, also actually, if you have any errors as well inside the driver or trying to load the driver, it won't actually tell you what it is. It'll just say it failed to load the driver. So just something to keep in mind when you're trying to debug any problems you might have trying to load backend drivers. Uh, so the next one is extending the Neutron command line. So the Neutron command line is deprecated, but I felt this was important just for debugging purposes if you wanted to make sure everything was set up right. So you define the entry point as well in the setup.cfg. And then to the right, you can see you kind of just define a typical Neutron command file. Uh, and then, as a, yeah, and just link it with the extension name. Uh, so the last thing I just wanted to cover was a dev stack plugin. So to create a dev stack plugin for an out of tree project, all you do is create a dev stack directory, and then you put inside it a settings file and a plugin.sh file. 
So the settings file, what you can do is you assign variables, and these can be overridden inside your local.conf when you're stacking. And in the plugin.sh file, it's a script that'll run at the different stages of dev stack as it, can, as it passes in the different arguments. So for example, you see here there's two for when it's stacking and when it's installing, and when it's stacking and when it's in post config. So uh, for example, when it's installing, it'll just put it in the uh, neutron skeleton extension directory that you assign. Or, or you don't, in which case it defaults to the destination with Neutron Skeleton extension. Or post config, where it actually writes in the different ex agent parts into the different, it, it, it writes in, sorry, it writes in the extension names onto all the agent extension fields uh, at the end of it. So these are just some resources uh, that we think were very useful in writing the, in making this talk. And just some legal notes and disclaimers, and ooh, logos, logos. And here are some QR codes. Uh, so the one on the left is for a repo to this actual agent extension, if you want to have a further look at it and just see if there's anything of interest in there. Uh, the one on the right is for this talk. So if you want to look at this later or get the references from the talk, uh, you're very welcome to do that. And uh, yes, are there any questions for any of us? Were we good? good. <laughs> All right. Good. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Thank you very much. <laughs>